So this will this will help then companies reporting earnings certainly. I mean we we are not hearing a lot of commentary from companies when they look ahead in terms of guidance about the dollar. But you you think in the third quarter when we look back at what has taken place so far this year that the weaker dollar is going to be real helpful. Yes, it will be. And we've already heard phase one of that is that companies are complaining less about a strong dollar. So phase one they complain less, and phase two it starts helping in their sales. To overseas markets. It's interesting the way you're speaking, Mohammed. I feel like maybe you're getting a little more bullish on stocks in the U.S. Am I wrong? So my major concern is how well we've done already and the extent to which we have decoupled from fundamentals. Mm. My hope, Maria, and I think that's the hope of not just investors but of every American in the street, is that fundamentals can improve to validate the high valuations and push them higher. So focus on fundamentals. Liquidity, which has been ample, is a journey. It's not a destination. The destination for stock markets and for the economy is about fundamentals. So then what do you want to do in terms of investing today? Should you wait and look for opportunities, or do you want to be invested in the U.S. as this is taking place? I think you need to be highly selective. Most professional investors are worried about valuations. We've come a long way quite quickly. So I think you'll find that most professional investors are torn. On the one hand, they want to ride the liquidity wave, but on the second, they real, on the other hand, they realize that this is part of a journey, not a destination. And a good journey has to end up in a good destination. So I would be more cautious at this stage, and I'd be a lot more selective. All right. I want to ask you two questions: one on the Fed's balance sheet, uh, and the other on fiscal policy, Mohammed. On the Fed's balance sheet, a lot of concern that they're going to start winding down this four and a half trillion dollar balance sheet, and it's going to be disruptive. We heard what Jamie Dimon said. This is never, this is unprecedented. Don't expect that this is going to go so smoothly. What's your take as the Fed starts to sell some of those securities on its balance sheet and it's as big as four and a half trillion dollars? They want to get it down. Yes, it's unprecedented. Yes, it's uncertain. But I think the Fed is going to be very, very careful, Maria. They do not want to disrupt financial markets, and for good reason. If they disrupt financial markets at this level of valuations, that can contaminate the economy. So, yes, it's uncertain. Yes, it's unprecedented. But the Fed is going to be really careful. Remember the analogy, like watching paint dry. That's what they want to make this. Right. <laughs> That's a good point. All right. What about fiscal policy? We're all waiting on health care and tax reform, Mohammed. Uh, if they don't get this, these legislative victories in 2017, first of all, do you think they will get any legislative victories? And if they don't, how big of a sell-off would you expect in stocks? So I think we need tax reform, and all your discussion this morning and last week spoke to the importance of tax reform for the economy. And if you get tax reform, you can move on rates. And these things have to come together. Are we going to get it? That's a political call. I'm, I'm not really that qualified to, to talk out of politics, but from an economic perspective, we need it. Markets are not expecting that much, so if it occurs, it would be an upside. Okay, so you don't think markets are expecting a big tax reform package? You don't, you don't think it's priced in? Well, so, so what's driving this market then, uh, aside from anticipation that we will get tax reform? You think it's just strong fundamental backdrop, like earnings? Yeah, it's liquidity. It's liquidity from, from foreign central banks, it's liquidity from corporate balance sheet, and it's liquidity from household. And the reason why I don't think it's tax reform, look at what happened to the dollar. Look at what's happened to the fixed income markets where the 10-year Treasury has come down. Look at what's happened to the differential between U.S. Treasuries and the Bund. All this suggests that the market has priced in less progress on pro-growth, and it's just the stock market that's benefiting enormously from liquidity. Yeah, that's a great point. Do you think that liquidity continues? I think it does for now. This is a very nice journey, but think of it as a journey. At some point, you've got to hand off to a destination. So a journey can be very long, very comforting, very re rewarding, and that's what we've had so far. But it's important that everybody also ask the question, what does the destination look like? And yeah. that's what you, you go back to politics. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Mohammed, great to speak with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mohammed El Arian joining us this morning.